Today I'm going to share with you how I draw Roblox avatars. I'll explain my process from the beginning to the end and give tips that I find useful when drawing. Now before we get into it, I know many of you will be curious about what I use to draw, so here it is. My tablet is the Wacom Cintiq 16 and the program I use is Clip Studio Paint. I also use an old sock to as a drawing glove. Step 1. Choose your avatar. Roblox gives a lot of freedom and customizability, so there are countless different avatars to choose from. When it comes to choice, you can choose yourself, a friend, or a stranger. The avatar that I chose to feature today was selected from the comment section of one of my shorts. Dana, welcome back to the channel. Now that you've chosen an avatar, it's important to understand the different types of avatars in Roblox. Different levels of arbitrariness of Roblox avatars and the levels are categorized in three. Number one, well-established characters or cosplay. These avatars exist outside of Roblox, so you're giving a clear idea of what to expect if you know what they're from. Was that the- For example, Chainsaw Man, Tifa Sharp, Baggy Clothes, Orange Eyes, all of that is given clear as day. At that point, you're really just doing a fan art of that character rather than the avatar itself, so for cosplay, I usually stay away from that. Moving on to the next level. Number two, original characters or arbitrary avatars. Now these avatars are arbitrary, and what I mean by that is there's a a lot of characteristics we don't know about. For example, what's the eye color of this avatar? We don't know. Unless you see it as it is, then the color would obviously be black, but would you really want to draw black eyes every single time? For me, I choose an eye color that complements the color of the hair. Black hair would go with black or dark brown. Blonde and brown would go with blue, hazel, or green. Non-natural colors could go with anything. Now for Dana, I didn't choose to draw the eyes, but if I did, it would probably be blue because of all the blue hints around her. A good question, why didn't I draw the eyes? Well, that's because the eyes are covered by her hair. However, it is possible to still draw the eyes a lot of different ways, but I'm not gonna listen. You could probably figure that out. So it's up for interpretation on these sort of things. Fortunately, you could clear up these ambiguities and you just talk with the person you're drawing. So that way they could provide you with accurate detail. Number three, abstract avatars. These are your minimalists, your trolls, and anything else. What the hell? Step two, inspiration. Now, before I pick up the pen, I always get some sort of inspiration. I was like, okay, I'm gonna draw the front, but then the pack pack's not gonna show. You can't hide the bunny. How am I gonna make this work? And then I remembered this unique painting. A petite woman with the pet beside her. I really liked this painting, so why don't I draw something like this? Inspiration. inspiration. You could get inspiration anywhere. For me, I like old and classic paintings created by masters, going to museums and stuff like that. Highly recommended that you get inspiration. Inspiration. And it will make a huge difference. Step three, draw. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. My order of operation when it comes to drawing is sketch, outline, color, and then finally details. Just to note, I don't always go by this process, it depends on the avatar that I'm drawing. Like for example, I might not always add color or add outline to it. Number one, sketch. When it comes to sketching, I'm putting down the essentials and not worrying about anything else. I get as messy as I need to be and it's meant to be thrown away afterwards. Number two, outline. Now when it comes to outlining, I think you really have to nail this part down. I take the longest time to get it right, so just look at the real time for a moment. And that's just one line. Five thousand more to go. Number three, color. First, I always lay down a muted color background because a solid white background can mess with your color perception. This one looks lighter, but then this one looks darker, when in fact, they're actually the same exact color. When it comes to picking colors, I always come up with my own. And what I mean by that is I never use the eyedropper tool to copy paste colors from the avatar onto my drawing. The reason is because one, it's just lazy. Two, the colors always turn out wonky. Let me show you what I mean. Like, hey, what is that? The colors will just look that much better if you come up with your own, and uh, you'll be just that much better with coloring. Number four, details. When it comes to details, it all comes down to <laughs> feeling. 
There's no right or wrong and everything is subjective. Like for example, hair strands. It's just so tiny, one of many, and it won't make that much of a difference. Another example, the cheeks. For the amount of airbrush color I got on here, I was like, okay, this is too much, looks like a puddle. This is not enough, but this is okay. It's all feeling. Sometimes I tend to get sucked into the nitty gritty detail, so I always make sure to zoom out, look at the drawing from a distance, and then ask myself, does this affect the big picture? And if the answer is no, then that tells me that I can now stop adding more details to reduce redundancy. So that's how I draw Roblox avatars. If you found this video helpful, leave it a like. If you have any questions or something that you disagree with or have something to add on, leave a comment. Other than that, talk to you guys later.